Hi, welcome to Election 2015. I'm Lisa Hebner, and it's been my honor to serve as your first selectman since January of this year and as a member of the Board of Selectmen for the last six years. I ask you to vote for me and my team on November 3rd. I am proud of what we have accomplished together. We've cut taxes two years in a row, cut costs, secured Simsbury's AAA bond rating from Moody's, and today, Simsbury is a number nine best town in America from Money Magazine. These things didn't happen by accident. This election is about protecting the quality of life that brought so many of us to Simsbury, but doing so in the most cost-effective manner, because we understand that the money the town spends comes from your pockets. We work hard every day to ensure you get the maximum value for every dollar you contribute. Today, I have with me our team's candidates for the Board of Finance, who share our commitment to fiscal responsibility, and you'll have an opportunity to hear from them about their approach to keeping Simsbury a great community. So welcome John and John. We have John Winter and John Merz, who are running for the Board of Finance, the first time candidates for election. Mm -hmm. It is uh, difficult to put your name on a ballot, and so I wanna thank you and congratulate you for stepping up. Thank you. Um, John, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and why you wanna run? Sure, yeah, so um, I'm, I'm originally uh, from, from Northeast Pennsylvania. Um, I, I came here after college um, to uh, work uh, in insurance as an actuary. Um, and uh, so I was living in Hartford before this, and um, because of the, the schools in the town, which is what a lot of the, for most people, what drew them to Simsbury, um, you know, we, we, we were familiar with the great schools here, and we have friends that live in the area, and we were getting used to, like, the nice culture from coming into the town here and the way of life. Um, so uh, because of that, we decided to move here, my wife and I, um, before we had a son. And um, so now that I have a, a, a three-year-old son, you know, we're, we're uh, looking forward to him being involved in the schools in Simsbury. So, um, you know, we definitely recognize that value. Um, you know, I think what, I, what I'm hoping to do, you know, so initially my reason for, for wanting to run for the Board of Finance, um, you know, initially I came to you, as you know, <laughs> and, I, and I said, uh, you know, I, I want to be involved and contribute to the town in some way. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of tired of just kind of you know, talking about things in the town or just listening and, and um, not really being able to do anything. So I wanted to do something. Um, this was a great opportunity that came up that there was this opening in the Board of Finance. And um, it was a good fit because of my, my actuarial um, background, um, which is heavily involved in analytical work. Um, you know, we, it, at least in what I do today, it, we have to make a lot of sort of assumptions about how do we fund long-term obligations, you know, so we focus on being, you know, conservative and making sure that we have the right amount of funds to spend. Um, so, you know, that, that I think ties in nicely with the Board of Finance. So, you know, I'll have that good kind of uh, focus on details, you know, looking long-term at trends, and um, so I, I think that'll be a nice, and I, and I like listening to people and, and seeing what other people's points of view are and incorporating, you know, all the concerns people have. Great. So, yeah. And John, you are also a first-time candidate. And I tell us am. a little bit about you and why you decided to run. Very similar to my partner, uh, John Winter here, came to Simsbury for the school system. I've got a daughter who is a little older than John's child, and uh, we looked around the suburbs of Hartford. We were living in Hartford, and hands down, Simsbury is just the most beautiful place with the best schools and um, we had to come so we've been here for 12 years uh, my daughter graduated through the high school and is off on her own and will probably never leave uh, the town is so quaint and so quintessential new england that it's it's beautiful and i run so i use the trails almost every day uh, I bike, there's beautiful bike paths and brand new signage that just came up. I'm very excited about that. And so, like John, I'm not a politician. I uh, have never run for a, an office and I felt like if the people don't get involved in government, then we leave our decisions up to other people. When I saw your slate and when I've seen what you have done, I just got so excited and I'm so proud to be part of your slate. 
that I figured I'll throw my hat in the ring and hopefully I can be part of a winning team that will keep taxes down, keep quality up, and uh, make Simsbury the kind of place that people will want to come and stay. Well, thank, thank you both for running. Mm -hmm. I think you, you made a great points about what local government is. It's not something done by others, it's something done by us, so neighbors mm -hmm. and friends. And if we aren't willing to step up, who will? So, you know, people, we, we are fortunate to be in a community where so many people give up their time. Mm -hmm. Either they will run for office or they volunteer their time with beautification or with mm -hmm. the Cub Scouts or the, uh, the Junior Women's Club. All these things contribute to our community and that's what makes us so strong and what's made us win uh, some national and state recognition. Do you want to talk about um, some of the things that we've recently mm -hmm. been awarded because I think that really reflects our values. Yeah. John, do you yeah. want to talk about the Money Magazine? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I, I think we all know it in the town that we're a great town and so it, it is kind of nice to see that sort of that recognition, um, you know, maybe it's, we're not, we don't know the people that live in Sinsbury, all the other towns in the country, but, you know, we have that feeling, you know, we're really good. Um, but I think to see that sort of um, come through or sort of formally more recognized, I think is kind of nice and it, and it makes sense. I mean, we have the combination of the schools here, again, which I mentioned earlier, um, the open space that we have, I think really kind of makes us a little bit different than at least some of the surrounding towns that we have that that kind of value that I think people also, you know, bring people here. Um, kind of a nice historical culture, um, you know, that I think helps us stand out. Um, and just great people here, you know, it's, there's, um, you know, in, in sort of meeting people when, as I've been working to run for the Board of Finance here, um, it's really, there's such a wide variety of people and different ideas and thoughts. And I think that's kind of a, a neat, um, sort of unique thing, you know, at least across Connecticut, I think. so. Um, it makes a lot of sense. And to be ninth yeah. in the country yeah. for small towns is just, I, and I credit you and the uh, Democrats who have made that happen. I would say it's just, it's probably a combination of so many volunteers right. who make this, mm -hmm. invest mm -hmm. in the community, various boards. We work with the Board of Finance, the Board of Ed. So it's really a team effort. Right. John, why? With strong leadership. Well, thank you. With strong leadership. <laughs> I appreciate that. And we that. need to keep that strong leadership <laughs> going into the next year. Thank right. you. But why are these recognitions important to the strength mm -hmm. of our economy? What is well, I think sure. the, the other, uh, thing to note, I don't know if you would call it an award, but the fact that Moody's has rated us with a triple A bond rating is so important because that is so important for the Board of Finance. That will help us borrow money at a cheaper rate when we go for some of the capital improvements that are so necessary. And that is not given lightly, that rating, and it's done because we've been so fiscally conservative. And we need to continue to do that so that when we do choose to uh, borrow, like any good responsible entity would for big projects only, that we can get the biggest bang for our buck with the lowest rate. So that's sort of another thing that we can be very proud of and uh, that will sort of shore up that fiscally conservative base and the philosophy that uh, both John and I share. I, I think you make a great point about all that. I think, you know, our quality of life and our fiscally conservative management are great not just for our residents and keeping taxes in check, but they're also what appeal to new residents and new businesses who are right. looking for a place to start. That's true. And so it's important for economic growth as well. So we're very mm -hmm. proud of that. Mm -hmm. um, why don't we talk a little bit about budget priorities and what the Board of Finance does. The, the, in Our town government is made up of basically three boards that deal with the operating budgets. There's the Board of Selectmen, who deals with town stuff, so that's roads, police, mm -hmm. Simsbury mm -hmm. Farms, library, senior center, social services, and permitting and planning. And then there's the Board of Ed, which of course deals with our quality of education, which is right. so important to all of us who are being here. You want to talk about the percentages and sort of how we prioritize spending and how we approach these budgets, because the Board of Finance's role is not really to do policy, but to do finances. How do we pay for everything that we want to do? So John, you want to talk a little bit about that, start us off? Yeah, sure. I mean, so, I mean, just sort of at a, a large scale here. So we have, you know, board, board of Ed and Education is about 70% of our budget, right? And then we have the, um, 
the uh, the sort of the town or the the uh, the office of the selectman is about like twenty percent just to kind of do the ba the basics of the town, keep the town running, um, and then so there's ten percent for for some of the other items, um, and so for the for education, I mean we have to be, you know we we of course we would look at it and we have to see, um, we we factor in the fact that enrollment is is declining. Um, for, for, for from year to year, at least in the, the near term and what we've seen recently. Um, and so we, we do have to consider that, but as the enrollment declines, you can't just sort of stop, you have like immediately a fewer teachers and things like that. So you, you have to be very careful and you have to still cons keep it strong. Um, so th that's, that's one place to look. Um, yeah, I think that um, <laughs> our, our balancing act, right, yeah. is that there are things in all of the budgets that we have no choice, but you have mm. to pay for. Right. You're exactly right. What sort of things are things you have to pay for? In our operating budget, mm. there are things right. we have to pay for. Well, there's for. police, there's fire, there are the negotiated contracts that we right. have. Uh, when the snow comes down, you've got to plow, and that's a, a cost that we can't uh, really impact. Um, so those are, and most of the budgets, both the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Ed, a lot of those, if not most, of the uh, costs are non-negotiables, right? So we really only have a little bit of play with things that we should pay for but don't have to pay for. And you walk a fine line because if you defer things that you should pay for and you don't, you end up paying more at the end. So we don't want to be penny wise and pound foolish. And then there are some things that, geez, it would be nice to spend or, or pay for or have. And that's where, depending on the health of each of the budgets, we can say, yeah, let's do that. Let's have that extra icing on the cake or not this year. And I think those are the challenges that we'll have is keeping all of the costs down even the ones that we have to pay for, the ones that we'd like to pay for, and those that um, maybe not this year. Yeah, you mentioned deferred costs, and I think that's one of the things the Board of Finance and all three boards, Board of Ed and Board of um, Selectmen, have worked together to make sure that we're maintaining our assets. So that's sort of paint the house so you don't have to replace the siding. Absolutely. And another mm -hmm. thing um, that the town is really working with the Board of Ed and the Board of Finance are, are energy upgrades. Mm -hmm. And so you might spend a little more on that, but why is that important, John, um, over time to do, make those investments in the short term? Because in the long term, you get. Yeah, sure, I mean, right, I mean, as you said, I mean, you have to, you can't, if you only focus on the short term, you're obviously going to get in trouble, right? So um, I, I think as, as you look ahead, you don't just look into sort of being fiscally conservative now, you have to consider the fact that unless we kind of, um, you know, if we make investments today, then we can, save costs down the road, of course, you know, whether it's, I know, like, one of the projects we had was to have more efficient lighting in the town, right? So, I mean, you know, there's, there's initial investment today, but that, you know, quickly starts saving us money down the road. Um, so, you know, there are these, these kinds of, of considerations. If you, uh, I'm really excited about a couple things. One is that my understanding is, again, under your leadership, because the buck stops with you, <laughs> mm -hmm. that, um, the town staff were able to find some real savings and um, came to you and said, hey, if we do business a little differently, we, we can have savings. So I'm, I'm excited that we're looking at that. And two, that we're investing our money and getting interest for the first time in the history of the town. Safe, you know, CDs, no risk to principal, but we're actually making money on our money and turning that back into operating principles. And I think the other thing that I'm really excited and proud about is that we uh, really take seriously our pension uh, responsibilities and liabilities and that we put as much money as we can toward that, unlike some other towns and the state where they're sitting with a huge liability because they've got unfunded pensions. That's not a way to run a household or a business, certainly not a town. And so that's one of the things that really excited me about coming on board.
Thank you. You know, we're really proud of that. Um, our pensions, unlike um, some pensions you hear about on the national level, for the average uh, town employee is about 14000 a year and, and 30000 for police. So these are not exorbitant pensions, but we do want to treat our employees fairly. And so one of the things you mentioned is we sometimes our collections come in above what we expected, and we have a choice. Do we put that in savings or do we invest that somewhere where it's a priority? And this last year we put some to fund some of our pensions to increase the funding. And when you do that, you reduce the annually required contribution that the town has to make. So you want to talk about what the ARC is, John, and why that's right. important. I mean, right, so that, yeah, the ARC, it's the amount that we need to um, spend at least to get back up to fully funding our, our pension obligations each, each year. And so um, we, and we, we meet that, um, you know, every, every year so far, at least in, in, since we, I guess we, we initially became um, underfunded after the economy collapsed, right? And so there's a certain amount we have to spend every year in order to get back up to that level where we're fully funded. And we're, and we're meeting that every year. Um, and, and, which, exceeding which, and exceeding it, sure. So, I mean, that, that goes in part to the, again, the, the AAA Moody's rating. I mean, we're being careful to make sure that we have the right amounts so we're not caught off guard, especially by surprises in the future, um, because that, that's what can sort of lead to you know, if, if you have surprises, that's when you can sort of have tax increases maybe that you weren't planning on. So sort of as long as we're managing it well, you know, we should hopefully be, be in good shape for right. the future. So, and and yeah. another very specific thing that you have done is that when we have a bond for these la large capital improvements, rather than having a 20-year bond or a 15-year bond, we've limited those to 10-year bonds so that we're not basically in, um, investing on our children's future, right? We, it's similar to having a car payment. You can have a five-year car payment, but if you have a three-year car payment and you knock it out, you, you've got an asset without a drain on your income. And that's what we're doing as a town. And that really keeps us fiscally conservative and sound. And and I think that's exactly right. And that's actually a policy that was set by the Board of Finance and that they have kept uh, to, uh, for, for exactly the reasons you say, it really does. Um, that's, you know, we certainly su support that. That is within the purview of the Board of Finance, and they've done a good job of um, limiting it to 10 year bonding. And, and when I first came into office, I was curious as to why they picked 10 years. And 10 years is the average amount of time that a resident stays in Simsbury. So if you vote for it, you should be willing to pay for it is sort of the theory behind it. And again, it also goes to the, your notion of being fiscally conservative mm -hmm. and keeping that AAA bond rating, which is so right. very important uh, to the town because it saves money over time. Okay. You, you use the word vote. If there's any message we can get across to any person living in Simsbury, it's so important to take your civic responsibility, go to the polls on November 3rd and vote. Mm -hmm. Now. I know who I want you to vote for, Lisa and her team. <laughs> but regardless, I think it, it just behooves anyone who lives in town to, to go to the polls and vote. Our turnout rate is not great It's as a nation, right? And I think that's something that we all need to hold ourselves accountable to do is to vote. If 100% of the nation voted, who knows what the world would look like. But if more uh, Simsbury folks vote, I'm sure it would be better because folks will feel more invested in the town that uh, we're trying to make yeah. better while keeping taxes down, the mill rate down, and quality high. So I would sort of, people voting allows them to join our team. Yeah. Right. And, and we had, I mean, what was it, I think for the last budget in, in May, that was 5% five, five or 6% six six, six, of the, of the yeah. people um, from the town voted for that. And I mean, it's, I think part of it is, you know, people just may not be aware of what's happened here, kind of the cycle of when, when things happen. I mean, that would be, I don't know what we can do exactly, but I think that is worth, I'm interested in sort of helping to try to sort of inform people or sort of make people aware of what's happening. And like you said, I mean, if they're, if people are more involved, they're really kind of in the town government too, because we're all volunteers, you know, at least those that are sort of formally serving. And um, I think having more engagement can only help, I mean, because you're getting the, all the different points of view, you're meeting the concerns of all the people, and they're all, all those concerns are being expressed. Um, so I think, I mean, I, I, really, I really believe strongly in trying to get that percentage of people out to vote higher, you know, if, if there's, 
I can't obviously in the board of finance that's not our role exactly, but I, I think it's very important. And I no, strongly you're, believe you're right that, because you know. we get a we get a better feel on. I, some people will say that the voter turnout six percent in the budget referendum is really a reflection that people are very happy mm -hmm. with that's what true. we've done, and sure. about over eighty percent of those who did vote mm -hmm. voted positively for the budget. So that was a great mm -hmm. indication from the public. But I think you are exactly right about um, the need to communicate with the public more mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. make sure that they understand. Some of this stuff is, you know, unless you're diving deep in it, it can be complicated and there are yeah. terms that are thrown out there like ARC and OPEB and stuff right. that don't make a lot of sense unless you deal with that on an everyday uh, motion. So there, I think... Yeah, I mean, at least, you know, sort of identifying the really key items that are important for people to kind of be aware of that are, that are happening. Um, I think it's, as you said, there are, there are a lot of very detailed things, you know, that on the Board of Finance they deal with, right, that of course, you know, people, you know, either they may not care about because they're sort of you know, really down into the weeds of things or, or, or what, what you might have there. Um, but I think like some of the big items, I think it's important for people to know what's happening because no one wants to find out about anything sort of surprising. It's like, well, I didn't know that was going to happen, right? So, right. I mean, um, I think uh, the, the better, the more we can educate the, the town, I think that would absolutely help. And, and I'm, 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 one of my passions is to sort of hear what people are going through or what their right. concerns are. I mean, y you, you hear, sort of something you hadn't thought of before with every person you talk mm -hmm. to as we've gone around and uh, you know knocked on doors and heard people's concerns. Um, there are things that are, are very, very relatable and you can certainly understand, but it was surprising some of the things that people were sort of, you know, dealing with or going through that they can't, you know, kind of afford to stay in the town any longer. I mean, this is what we're talking about with, you know, keeping taxes low and, and um, we, we need to, absolutely keep that in mind because I, th I think that's not fair really that people can't afford to live here it's a shame like they really want to they value the town they recognize the value but it's just it's just hard so I think it's really important that's why I really want to get in and kind of see what's going on where are places we can kind of eliminate waste in the budget um, or inefficiencies there may not be a lot of waste but I mean certainly some there could be some there are always some inefficiencies so um, right for example looking at, I believe it was the telephone system, yeah. and mm -hmm. by rebidding that out, we saved $40,000. That's money that we can spend somewhere else or lower taxes. Uh, both John and I are taxpayers. We don't want to be spending a lot of our hard-earned money in taxes any more than anyone else in town. So what we'll try to do is keep taxes down, the mill rate down, but we're also here because we love Simsbury and the quality of life that it affords all of us. And so there's a, we'll strike a balance, but certainly um, we'll, we'll do our best to keep all finances down, find efficiencies, mm -hmm. keep the quality of life, and uh, sing your praises. Oh, yeah. well, that's not necessary. But one of the things yeah. we've been talking about is how to save costs, and that is a certain, that is a major factor in uh, your taxes. Yeah. But there's also the revenue side of it. Mm, sure. And we get most of our revenue from our taxpayers, mm, you yeah. know, and uh, some from the state. And, and not that much from the state, but to the extent we do get it from the state, you want to talk about sort of how that impacts our finances and how that makes it, you know, sometimes a challenge for us. Yeah. Right. I mean, certainly what, what we get from the state, it can be certainly very volatile. I mean, I think, you know, there, there are things going on at the state level that, you know, may, people may hear about um, quite a bit that, uh, that can obviously affect, you know, what, what, what our tax rates would be here. And so, and so well, some of this is the conservatism. It's important for us to um, plan conservatively and, and sort of not overestimate what we think we will get from the state government, because if we did overestimate that, that would be, of course, an issue. Um, I mean, I know one of the things that just happened is the, uh, the, uh, the state, there was recently the amount the last week or two that came out that we were going to get 100000 less than what we planned on, but that doesn't put us in a bad position because we were sort of prepared for that. Um, but, you know, these are things we have to, have to take into account. And, of course, as you said, the, the property taxes are what makes up the bulk of, uh, of the revenue, but the, the state component, as that fluctuates, can be... Be an issue. And, and while we got a hundred thousand less in pilots, which is payment in lieu of taxes, mm -hmm. we did get three hundred thousand dollars more than we had planned for in the shared school payments arrangements. So, um, I think it is a challenge to uh, you don't know where money's coming, but we have seen, for example, an increase in permits. So that's a good sign because it means that people are 
engaged in the economy, they're hopeful, and uh, so we'll see some growth, although we're, we're not wanting to become a sprawling mall by any <laughs> uh, imagination. Mm -hmm. um, but that is more more money that we can we can play with. But yeah, the state is an unknown, and that's why every uh, revenue line is sort of projected uh, conservatively, and every fi every expense line uh, is projected a little more than what we really think it's going to be. So that at the end of the day, we have money left in the bank uh, to either return to the taxpayers or to put toward our pension or to uh, spend on projects that we would not otherwise be able to spend them on. And one of the things um, that the Board of Finance has done is they set the collection rate for taxes and they always uh, assume, rightly, because it's uh, fiscally conservative to do so, that they are going to collect la less than they actually do. And that enables us to build a cushion right. to anticipate unexpected uh, changes in our budget, like the reduction of 100000 from the state, or the 2011 October storm, right. which uh, devastated. Right. One of the things we do also is that we have a huge reserve, uh, well, not a huge, but an appropriately mm -hmm. A sized reserve of about 11 percent with a policy of 10 to 12 percent and that gives us the flexibility to deal with some of the unanticipated uh, changes from the state or from nature that comes our way. So I think that that's really important. Um, one, let's take a quick minute to say one last reason why folks should vote for you. John. Well sure, I mean so as I mentioned um, I cer certainly very much care about the town um, I, I really strongly want to serve the community, and I think that the, the actuarial background I have um, with the focus on the details and um, really making sure that we can look at all the different items that might help us save money and sort of get the most value out of the tax dollars that everyone is spending, um, I think that that's really critical. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, putting that you know, into the town and put my skills in, into use. Thanks, and John? So I'm passionate and I'm not going away, so I'm gonna be in Simsbury a long time. Uh, I didn't mention that I do have an MBA and I run a large nonprofit in Hartford, so I know what it means to balance a budget. And um, I'm just excited because I think we're really in a place where we're gonna see Simsbury blossom and I wanna be a part of it. Great. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today. I hope you learned something about these great candidates that I have the honor of running with, and we ask for your support and vote on November 3rd. See you at the polls. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. <laughs>